Football season is over, and as we turn our attention to the ice and hardwood, what better two handicappers to bet along with than Dave Koken in the NHL and Brian Leonard in college basketball? Up 128% in profit, that is a combined bankroll increase from Brian Leonard at 70% in college basketball and Dave Koken 58% in the NHL this season. For a limited time, we have a special offer to lock in Brian's college hoops through the Final Four and National Championship and Dave's NHL through the Stanley Cup in June for only $4.79. The special price locks in two handicappers, two sports, through the championship in both sports for $209, less than buying each season individually, and $1,000 less than purchasing daily packages from now through June. Hey guys, welcome in and a very happy uh, Thursday to you here, February the 17th, and uh, another loaded card in college hoops tonight. We're going to break down a few of these marquee matchups for you, and we are going to do it to a three of the best here as we welcome in Mr. Tony Finn in the top spot there, uh, Steve Merrill back in the seat here with us, and of course, Dave Koken ready to go here on a nice college basketball thursday and uh tony finn uh continuing yeah. uh to roll certainly in the association the nba a lot of college hoops uh coming up this weekend as well you got anything in store for us uh tonight at wagertalk.com i do i have a couple of college and i have two nba surprising with that small card but I, I have a couple i think are favorable so uh come on come on by the page home page there at wager talk uh two college two nba one package all right, there you go, guys. Uh, and Merrill, what's going on, uh, my man, here today? Uh, any William and Mary on the list? I know they got a big one coming up this weekend. What's going on? Uh, they're on my calendar. I'm going to the game tonight <laughs> and this Saturday, the last two uh, home games. They get a Drexel, who they upset as a 15-point dog a few weeks ago. Now they're an eight-point home dog. We'll see about that. Um, so, yeah, I'll be checking out some CAA basketball, handicapping it while I watch tonight. Uh, look. Super Bowl finished this weekend. You know, football's done. Now's the time to play basketball. We've got the NBA hiatus for the next seven days starting tomorrow. So college basketball is the sport to be playing over the next week. I'm going to have my top 25 weekend preview up tomorrow night, Friday, here on Wager Talk TV. I'm going to have a special promo code in that video for the viewers only, which will get you a nice discount on either a 30-day or the rest of the college basketball season. And keep in mind, nobody has won more money the last two years since I joined wagertalk.com and college hoops. I'm right number one the past two years combined. Sneak preview if you go to my page right now at wagertalk.com, you get those promo codes a day in advance and get tonight's strong college basketball best bet that's backed by a 77% super situation. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. All right, good stuff there tonight. And uh, Dave, uh, you and uh, Brian certainly on the ice in college basketball continue. Uh, to rack in the profits there, your good friend Brian Leonard here. And tell us about the deal that's going on right now for those that uh, may not know. Well, Brian's had an extraordinary year uh, in college basketball. He actually, he's doing really, really well with everything. Uh, college basketball has been, been tremendous. Uh, he's up 60-something units on the season. Uh, my NHL, uh, I think the ad that Ruby did said 58 or 59 percent profit it's it's moved up from that because i still haven't lost a game since the all-star break so it's now at 66 mm. net units for the season i've got to play tonight in the nhl uh i also have i think it's the deepest college basketball card i've had all season i went with six games tonight wow now here's the here's the kicker one of them's the best bet you gotta buy that the other five are all free five free plays in college basketball tonight so just go to my home page uh, you can sign up for the uh, special offer with Brian and myself or individual games, whatever you like. Uh, and that's at uh, wt.buzz slash DC. Love it. All right, guys, head over there. All three of these gentlemen uh, ready to go here tonight. And so are we as we start off in the Big Ten here, guys, as uh, Michigan will be 
taking on Iowa. They opened up as a uh, six-point home favorite here tonight with that total right around that 151 and a half as an opening. And uh, Iowa, nice little three-game winning streak going on, beat uh, Minnesota. And, of course, just when you start trusting Michigan, uh, they uh, throw up against uh, Ohio State. So what do you do here, Tony Finn? You trust Michigan, uh, uh, or is it uh, Iowa all the way for you? Well, I think that's a, a great way to approach this game. Do you trust Michigan? Uh, I You could even say, do you trust Iowa? For the most part, this team has lost, I think, seven games this year that, to that number, which is surprising. And when, and when Iowa does lose, uh, Joe, guys, uh, it's Murray hasn't reached his scoring average and uh, all but one time. The seven losses they do have. And, and as well, he's leading rebounder. In those seven losses, he's only met his average in rebounding one time, uh, two times. Uh, save the, the game they played against, I think, uh, Rutgers or Penn State when there was, some, there was more, a lot, lot more missed shots than made shots. But in this game, it's, this is all about – you mentioned Iowa's schedule. Their three-game winning streak isn't you know, anything probably to write home about. What was it? It, was, uh, it, was, it wasn't fantastic, three unranked teams. Um, Michigan lost to Ohio State after really having a pretty good week. We had a two and three. They, they put a look at on Purdue, a, a game that I looked at and looked at. Uh, I was going to make a long story and a big story, which I think is tonight is a big story for Michigan, much more so than Iowa, is can you trust Michigan to be able to outscore Iowa? Uh, Michigan can score. Uh, the problem is can they defend Iowa in Iowa City? Uh, can they keep them 10, 10 points below their season average? Maybe more, 15 points below their season average. That's what they're going to have to do to win this game. I have a problem with it. I really have a problem with trusting them defensively. Uh, and for the most part, this I think is a pretty high total for a Michigan team that has uh, only exceeded this number, I think, once or twice this year, 150 and change. Uh, I would like the over. Not on this game, not in this room, guys. But I, if I were, I would be over the total and probably staying away from, from either side. All right. Uh, unlike uh, the easy schedule for Iowa there over the last three, it's been a hell of a run here for Michigan. Uh, they did beat Penn State there, Merrill. They beat Purdue. But, you know, when you go, uh, what was it, four of 18, I think, from three, uh, bad things tend to happen against Ohio State, and they did. So what do you think we get here tonight? Yeah, what's interesting about Michigan is they don't take the threes like they did, you know, years ago. They were a heavy, heavy three-point shooting team. Uh, that's not the case anymore. They get most of their scoring from two-point range. Uh, pretty efficient doing so. But one thing about Michigan is they want to play slow still. Iowa likes to play fast. So I think pace is going to be the key here. You know, normally I think you can slow down a fast team easier than vice versa. But as I always say, home teams can dictate tempo normally. And I do think uh, Iowa actually might dictate the tempo here at home tonight. If it's a faster-paced game, that gets me maybe looking at the over here in this one. Um, also, Iowa does not turn the ball over. They have the best uh, turnover percentage in all of college basketball. They only turn the ball over about 12% of the time. That's best out of 358 teams. Uh, Michigan does not force turnovers at all. One of the worst in the country. They're actually 335th in forced turnover percentage. So when you get a home team that I think can maybe dictate their preferred pace, and you know it's going to definitely win the turnover battle. Um, it gets me leaning that way on the side, but also when there's less turnovers, there's more scoring opportunities. And once again, that's going to enable Iowa to push the pace when they're not turning the ball over. So I like the over here in this one. Uh, it's currently in that 140s range, about 149-ish. Actually opened as high as 151 and a half, so it's come down a bit. I actually disagree with that move. All right, doesn't like it there. Dave, what do you think here, Big Ten action? Six always seems like it's a big number with the Big Ten. What do you think? Well, I guess I'll be repeating what Steve said. Uh, the, the tempo matchup favors the home team. They want to play fast. Michigan doesn't. And home teams have a tendency to dictate the tempo, especially when they've got superior personnel. Uh, the uh, turnover issue, I mean, Iowa just doesn't turn it over, and Michigan doesn't force turnovers. So it, it, to me, it's going to come down to a battle on the glass. Now, the one thing that would concern me is, and look, I'm not the coach. Michigan and Jawan Howard certainly knows more about his team than I do, but they're athletic, and I've I've wondered all season why they're playing at such a snail's pace. I think this team might be better if they go up and down the court. I lean Iowa in the game. Uh, I have a very difficult time trusting them because they're just they're kind of a soft team. 
And if this turn, does turn into a physical battle, I think that actually will favor Michigan. Iowa is not a tough team. Uh, but if, my numbers say Iowa and uh, the tempo thing would put me in their category. It's certainly not a play for me. All my plays tonight are underdogs, every one of them. So I'm not on any favorites. But I would lean to Iowa in this game. It is uh, the first matchup between these two teams, guys. Uh, last week of the college basketball regular season, they will meet again uh, in Michigan. So we'll see how it goes tonight. Michigan taking on uh, Iowa. Uh, we'll head out to the Pac-12 next. Let's take a look at UCLA and the uh, and uh, the Washington State Cougars here as UCLA opened up as an eight and a half point uh, favorite in this game, one twenty nine and a half. As a opening total, Steve Merrill, uh, big win for uh, big win. Uh, well, let's face it, UCLA hasn't done much winning as of late. But what do you think uh, at home tonight against Washington State? Yeah, it's been kind of downhill ever since the the big Arizona win, right? They, um, you know, had that monster win at home against them, and then, um, you know, got a little flat for a few games after they they kept it going to that home stand. But I guess you really say when they hit the road is when things went south. We talked about that game a few weeks ago here that rematch at Arizona. They lost that. They came out flat uh, the next game and lost in overtime against Arizona State. Uh, they bounced back against Stanford as I thought they would. I actually used them as the free play here on the show that day, but then they've come right back and they lost outright as a favorite at UC at U uh, USC. All four there were road games, and as I mentioned, they won and covered the three straight home games before that, so I do think it's good news for UCLA that they're getting back home tonight, and we talked about turnovers in that last game about how good Iowa is. Well, UCLA has given them a run for their money. UCLA has had nine turnovers or less in seven straight games, which is just remarkable. Iowa and UCLA, probably the two best ball handling, ball protecting teams in the nation this year. And I bring that up because one thing that Washington State relies heavily on, unlike Michigan, is that Washington State forces turnovers. Um, and they're not going to be able to do so here. So their preferred way of playing is not going to work tonight against UCLA, a team that will be focused off the loss, returning home. And Washington State relies heavily on the three-point shot. Uh, UCLA's strength on defense is actually two-point D, so that would get me leaning towards the over as well, over 129.5. Uh, so I like UCLA and the over in this one tonight. Great Mick Cronin uh, comment about uh, that USC loss going. The way we're playing, I don't know why the hell anybody would storm the court after beating us. I love Mick Cronin. Talk to me here, Dave. What do you think of uh, can they right the ship here tonight at all? Yeah, I think this is the wrong place at the wrong time for Washington State. Look, they're a well-coached team, but they don't have a lot of talent. It's the, he gets the max out of that roster. They're just not very good. And I think UCLA might be coming out in a bad mood tonight. And if, if they are, Washington State's got to try and slow it to a crawl. And, you know, first team to 60 wins. I don't think they're going to be able to do it. I think UCLA is going to have a good game here. Um, I, I, you can make a case that I'm making a mistake not playing them here. Uh, I didn't. I didn't make the bet, but to me, it's UCLA all the way here. I, I just don't think it's a good matchup for the Cougars at all, and I would expect Wazoo to get kind of trampled in this one. Yeah, it, it seems like a real tough spot here for Washington uh, State, uh, Tony Finn. What do you think, though? Are you going to back the uh, the home team here, UCLA, to get back in the W column? Well, I talked about this show. I talked about this game on the earlier show today on WTT, on Ways You Talk Today. And my first thought, my first look in this game was, the first off, the dichotomy between how UCLA plays at home and how they played on the road under Cronin, this team in particular. There's a gap. There's a gap. There are overs. They've scored home. They're really comfortable at home scoring. They don't turn the ball over like they've suggested here or said. And in this game, let's put it this way. With the line the way it is and the total of where it's at, there's a there's a strong, strong um, – I have a strong urge to be on the dog simply because when you have a total of less than 130 and you get a line double-digit number, it's big, especially a team like Washington State that can hit the three. In fact, the truth is here – if Washington State shoots better than 35, 38% from a three-point line, they win. They fire away from three. UCLA has prohibited teams, uh, I think, 13 times this year from doing it, whatever their season record is. 13 is what I counted. And in this game, is UCLA turning it around? Are they going to be Are they going to be better than they were in three out of the last four games? Obviously, they had a tough defeat to USC, but that was without Mobley. Without Mobley, a healthy Mobley, this team is pretty pedestrian. 
I didn't, I'm not in this game, not on this game. I do like the over 129. It's coming down, though. It's another one that's open. I saw 131s last night. I'm looking at it now, 129. I like the over. I like Washington State. Uh, they have to have their second worst loss, their second worst loss of the season, not to cover here, though. Okay. The worst was against Arizona um, last week, sometime this weekend, uh, again, where they lost by double digits. They have to lose by double digits, which would only be the second time this year. Give me the over. I like the over in this game. Okay. Taking some points there in that one, guys. Washington State taking on UCLA. And we're now going to head uh, to uh, familiar parts there of our producer, Robert, as the Houston Cougars at home taking on the UCF Knights. 13 and a half is an opening number. And uh, I'm still seeing some 13 and a half, maybe even some 14s popping up. That total, 136 here. Uh, and Dave, a couple of back-to-back -back losses for Houston. Uh, they are uh, they are salivating to get UCF tonight, or should they be? No, uh, this is if, if Washington State's in the wrong place at the wrong time, <laughs> UCF's <laughs> really in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, Houston was not good in the Memphis game, uh, and uh, particularly not good defensively. Calvin Sampson's not going to look. This team's going to be ready to play tonight. UCF. Uh, they surprised me early in the season. It's like, geez, this team might be better than I thought. But reality is set in, and they're just not that good. And I think they're going to run into a revved-up Cougar squad tonight. And this could be one of those 40-minute jobs where Houston just gets nasty. Uh, I would not be surprised if Houston wins this game by 20. I, I think they've got a chance to slaughter the, uh, the Knights tonight. So Houston's the side I like in this one. Yeah, you give them all the credit of the world. You lose your two best uh, players there earlier in the season, and they are still as competitive as ever here, Tony Finn. It yeah. feels like a mismatch. It's priced as a mismatch. Are you willing to lay it here with the Houston Cougars tonight? Yeah, I would be. If I was in this game, I would be, mostly because uh, of, as Dave mentioned, because of Samson, because of his – this is – listen, guys, this is a team that, um, while the road wasn't that difficult, right, where they'd be to get to the final four last year, they win. Um, they had, they were only facing like four dogs or four double digit dogs. I can't remember. I read something, but I always go back to that. And that fact is that, uh, Samson took over this program that was once, you know, Drexler and Elijah won a program that produced those kind of players and has kind of re, uh, you know, reignited the fire for, for people, for fans in Houston for this Cougars team. And I'm glad I, I liked Samson. Um, it was too bad what happened to him in, in Indiana, or maybe it's still beat it. Who knows, right? Uh, long story short in this is that um, while Houston may not be the most talented team in college basketball, they're definitely a team that you can always count on playing hard in Houston tonight against UCF, coming off two straight losses. Um, it could be – this, this is a game that could be really ugly by halftime. I, if I'm in this game, I'm definitely riding Houston to Samson not UCLF. We'll see what happens. All right. Good stuff there here. What do you think? Uh, talk to me here, Steve Merrill. Uh, first half, full game, total. How do you approach this? Yeah, I mean, you can make the argument maybe they come out hard right after back-to-back -back losses. First half of the, uh, I don't know. I think the, the full game is probably the safest way to play it, and it's Houston's the only way I would play this one. Um, it's not good for Central Florida here. Houston likes to force uh, pressure. I think they can do that at home here. Very uh, good slowdown half-court team also. Uh, UCF, uh, as Dave said, catching them in the wrong time here. You know, this is a rematch from an earlier meeting this season with Houston won fairly easily against UCF. So normally you'd say, hey, maybe they're going to overlook this one a little bit after the Memphis game, Wichita State on deck. Um, but I don't think that's the case after back-to-back -back losses. And I don't think anything's fundamentally wrong with Houston um, as I mentioned on the show Tuesday with my best bet here on the show on the Memphis Tigers, I think Memphis is a very underrated team right now that's finally playing up to their potential and has gotten healthy. So I think Houston caught Memphis at the wrong time. Now I think they returned the favor to Central Florida, who's catching Houston at the wrong time. Uh, only way I would play it is to lay it tonight with the big uh, 13 and a half with Houston. Yeah, nobody turns the ball over more than UCF, guys. And uh, that's a hell of a defense to uh, to be turnover prone against here. Uh, as Houston and UCF uh, get ready to do battle here tonight. And a bunch of other games here, a lot of big conference matchups of importance here tonight. 
So it's time to figure out if these guys uh, are leaning towards one of these games a little bit more than the rest. So, Dave, start us off here tonight with the game you got circled for us. Well, I've got six plays tonight in college basketball. One best bet and five other plays, and they're all dogs. Um, I've been using a formula in uh, revenge games with road dogs, and it's it's done well. Didn't do well last night, uh, but uh, for the most part, it's been terrific. So I went that route tonight. If I were going to go one more play, it would be Houston. Uh, I think it's a slaughter scenario tonight in Cougar Country. I think Central Florida gets smashed in this game. Again, my best bet is on my home page, along with five free college basketball plays. And I've got an NHL selection tonight. Uh, the NHL has been on a tremendous run. Uh, hopefully that continues. WT.buzz slash DC at wagertalk.com. Great stuff, guys. Make sure you head on over there. Grab that best bet here tonight as well. Talk to us, Steve Merrill. Where are you uh, Where are you going tonight leaning towards here for a best bet? Going to look at a, a free play on the late night national TV card tonight on Thursday, a late night game for you. Just a reminder, I do have a strong best bet for my clients at wagertalk.com for Thursday night college hoops out of a 77% ATS super situation, which I give you in the analysis. Also, sneak preview and advanced look at those fantastic promo codes, which I'll be unveiling tomorrow night on Friday in my weekend top 25 college basketball video. You can get a one-day advance jump on a special discount for either a 30-day or the rest of the college basketball season. That's seven weeks through April 4th for a special discounted price. Go to my page right now, stevemerrillwagertalk.com for those details. Number one ranked college basketball the past two years combined at wagertalk.com. Let's look at a free play tonight at 11 o'clock Eastern on FS1 National TV. You can look at UCLA minus nine and a half. A good spot for the Bruins to bounce back as they return home off a tough four-game road trip in which they went one and three straight up in ATS. Uh, they'd won six in a row before that. Uh, they've been a perfect 3-0 and straight up in ATS, the three home games before this recent road trip. I think they get back on track here tonight. And Washington State, good defensive team, slow down team. They really rely on forcing turnovers, though, but almost nobody in the nation protects the ball better than UCLA. They have had nine turnovers or less now in seven straight games, single-digit turnovers in seven straight and eight of their last nine, which is just fantastic. Uh, so Washington State's not going to get the easy points off turnovers. Uh, UCLA will score here, push the tempo a little bit more in their home court, and get a nice double-digit win. Good spot for UCLA. Good matchup. Goes at 11 o'clock Eastern tonight on Thursday. UCLA Bruins minus nine and a half. All right. Love it. Boom. Talk to us here. Tony Finn. A lot of ways to go on this board here tonight. Where where are you leaning? I'm gonna I'm going out west as well with Steve Merrill. I'm not going to Polly, but I'm gonna go to the uh, a game between Santa Clara. And Loyal Marymount. And that is, I like the over this game, although as I watched the board this morning, uh, it backs up on me a little bit. It, I think it opened somewhere in the high 140s, uh, 140. Let me look at it here, 140 and change, uh, 149. Now, you get, it's 146, actually, at many places, many locales, both both Vegas and offshore. Um, but Santa Clara has kind of surprised some people this year. This surprised me, to be honest with you. they become one of the more efficient um, high scoring teams, both, uh, at tempo and efficient and efficient offensively in adjusted metrics. Uh, if you go to, if you do, if you like metrics and you go to Ken Palm, for instance, and how it lights the board up and you'll see their opponents night being that of Loyola Marymount, you'll see a lot of red. Um, they're just not, it's a, in fact, it'll be a, an ocean of red. They rank 336th in effective field goal percentage. And that's out of, 358 Division One teams. <laughs> um, they rank over 300th in three-point percentage, 317th in two-point percent. So they give up about 33, 34 points a game. Tonight's game, um, it, I think, is I think this is a game that that easily surpassed the total. I have to look a little deeper, but uh, because of the way this total is going south, maybe something's happened. But right now, at this show, at this time, on the show at this time, over the 146 in Santa Clara, Loyola Marymount. All right, over 146 it is, and our friends from the Gold Sheets, they've got a play which happens to also be in that Santa Clara Loyola Marymount. They are looking at Santa Clara <laughs> to get the job done. So there you go. You got a total play 
Our friends at the Gold Sheet coming off, I believe, a sweep of the board yesterday. Yes. Uh, the Gold yes. Sheet over at wagertalk.com. And we'd certainly encourage you to read up on their write up here for this game. We post it to our Twitter page at Wager Talk. If you guys want to head over there on Twitter at Wager Talk, make sure you uh, we post all of them after each show here. But it would definitely behoove you to head over to goldsheet.com, check out all the write ups and the handicapping tools available to you there all right we uh we've had quite the run here this week on the show guests are 11 and 1 this week we're looking wow. to keep that rolling into tonight i'm gonna back uh portland here i'm gonna go with the pilots tonight on a small number at home uh taking on san diego uh, it's a whale's vagina but not tonight it's portland pilots lay the two here guys one of the one of the hottest teams in the country nobody seems to want to talk about We'll talk about them again tomorrow, though, I promise you. Uh, here we go for our best bet recap as Tony Finn likes the over in that Santa Clara LMU uh, game. Steve Merrill, he likes uh, the Bruins to get back on track, lay the nine and a half against Washington State. Uh, Dave uh, says there's going to be yellow tape in Houston tonight, mostly around UCF because Houston's about to murder them and run right over them at 13 and a half. I'm going to back the pilots of Portland late at two. And our friends from the Gold Sheet say Santa Clara is absolutely decide to go. Lay the five with them against Loyola Marymount. And hit that. Guys, don't forget, of course, best bets here. Uh, they told you Dave's got five free ones. The write-ups right now on his page, plus one best bet in college hoops and the NHL available right now. Steve Merrill, his package of plays is ready as is. Tony Finn, guys, no reason not to make it a profitable Thursday right now. Uh, head over to Wager Talk and visit all three of these gentlemen and hit that bell in the upper right-hand corner. Come back and join us again tomorrow as we head into what is going to be another huge weekend in college basketball. Until then, on behalf of Dave, Steve, and Tony, guys, best of luck with the plays tonight. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Good luck. Football season is over, and as we turn our attention to the ice and hardwood, what better two handicappers to bet along with than Dave Koken in the NHL and Brian Leonard in college basketball? Up 128% in profit, that is a combined bankroll increase from Brian Leonard at 70% in college basketball and Dave Koken 58% in the NHL this season. For a limited time, we have a special offer to lock in Brian's college hoops through the Final Four and National Championship and Dave's NHL through the Stanley Cup in June for only $4.79. The special price locks in two handicappers, two sports, through the championship in both sports for $209, less than buying each season individually, and $1,000 less than purchasing daily packages from now through June.